Separating the lid from a wood box can be kind of a daunting task to get a perfectly level and smooth edge where the top and the box meet. So I found that using this tenoning jig, or a jig that I've originally created as a spline cutting jig, I could clamp the box to it and it would hold the box at a uniform distance from the blade as I made the cut on all four sides. The beauty of this super simple jig is that it, it, it's holding a large flat surface 90 degrees with the tabletop of the table saw and so really anything I clamp to it is held upright. I guess technically you'd call it a tenoning jig because you can clamp boards to this and cut the t uh, cheeks of a tenon with it. Uh, I've used it as a spline cutting jig. I had two boards on it at a 45 degree angle to hold the box at a 45 degree angle. It's the same jig I used to cut these splines. And now I'm using it to hold the box at a uniform distance from the blade and then pushing the box through the blade with a uh, shallow depth setting that is just over the thickness of the boards which are about three quarters of an inch. And so here I'm just making the first pass through that box. When you've made only one pass the box is still super solid and the lid portion of the box is not going to move at all with regard to the rest of the box because three of the four sides are still solidly connected. As you come to the second cut, and this is one of the long cuts, by the time I'm done with this cut, you could have an issue where that one corner would be a little weak and therefore I switch over to putting spacers in the gap, eighth inch spacers, to hold the lid at a uniform distance from the rest of the box. You're probably noticing this piece of wax paper. I just feel like it's easier to push the box along on something that slides easily on the tabletop than to have the friction of the box pushing against the tabletop. So here you see I've got a, a piece of uh, walnut here that's an eighth of, eighth of an inch thick that actually is the same walnut I used for the splines. My table saw blade has an eighth inch kerf, so the eighth inch wood fills this gap tightly. And I made sure that they were tight. If they were a tiny bit loose, I'd put a layer of tape on the wedges or on the spacers in order to tightly hold at an eighth of an inch so that when I tape the box around those spacers. I'm holding a uniform distance. You can see I'm pressing on the lid here to see if it'll move because I'm going to clamp it to that board. I don't want that lid to be pressed closer to the blade. It would give you an uneven cut and then when the box is closed you see the uneven evenness of that cut as the lid meets the rest of the box. So here I'm just getting ready to make the third cut. It's another one of the shortcuts. I've got the box spacered. I've got it tightly taped. The lid doesn't want to move. This is only the third cut, so there really is not a huge danger of that, but I'll push it through here now to make the third cut. And then after three cuts, you've definitely got sort of a hinge effect because that last piece of wood um, is all that's holding that lid. It's sort of hovering over space. So you definitely want, after you've made the third cut, you want to fill all those gaps with eighth inch spacers. Tightly tape the box so that lid doesn't want to, uh, so to speak, hinge on that last remaining long side. So you'll see once I've made this third cut, I will take it off and put even more spacers so that that lid will stay at a uniform distance. I'll be able to clamp it and it won't press towards the blade to pinch the blade. 
So here I am, I'm just kind of going around the outside of the box. I've added more eighth inch spacers here and there to uh, keep that lid from moving. I've taped the box tightly together against those spacers so that once this fourth cut is made, that lid will still stay an eighth of an inch from the box without moving. So you have to think of it in terms of no more wood holding the lid to the box. So you have to have enough spacers evenly spaced around the perimeter so that the lid will stay out there at an eighth of an inch. So here's the final eighth inch cut, the fourth length. And you can't tell very well from this video, but you can see that even with those clamps pressing on the lid, the lid does not move. As I make the pass through the blade, it does not pinch. And here's sort of the, the reveal, so to speak, and I rub my hand all the way around the box. And it's just a very nice, flat, even cut, ready for mortising for hinges, mortising for a latch, and it'll give a very clean-looking, tight-fitting lid when it closes. Thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe.